In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this cool little plot. It's basically a linear model that is uh, created based on the MT cars data set, and it shows us our predicted versus actual values with our residual errors, which is basically the error rate uh, also. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. So first, we're gonna start with our favorite data set, MT cars, and we'll set that as uh, my data, which is nothing new here, so equals MT cars. Command enter, let's take a quick peek at that data set. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We have our regular miles per gallon, cylinders, et cetera, et cetera, and you can see over here, the last feature is carb. So close that out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a fitted model and so this is our model we're gonna call it uh, we'll, call, we'll just call it model one like always and it's a linear model and we're gonna try to predict miles per gallon again explained by weight now we've done this before our data is equal to my data so it's not nothing big here we're gonna we're gonna create a model so we created a model one now we might have multiple models the model itself is biased because we chose hey we think there might be some relationship between weight and miles per gallon it's a pure arbitrary choice that we made. Now it could have been a better model was based on miles per gallon and, and uh, quarter second mile. We don't know because we haven't played with that yet, right? But this, for example, is our first model, which is biased and reducible, a reducible error. So if this model doesn't work, we can create a better model. We have that ability to create better and better models. Now there's irreducible errors, don't forget, where there's certain error in, in the actual data that you just cannot predict. But this one, you can always create a better model. So let's start with that. What we're going to do is we're going to add our predicted and residuals to this model. So let's just go ahead and do um, my data. And we're going to create a feature called predicted. Predicted values basically is equal to our predict function, predict. And we're going to predict based on our fit, our model, the model that we created, right? Command enter. So again, my data my data i'm creating predicted on the fly using that little dollar sign here i'm going to assign that equal to a predict function i'm going to say hey take my model one that i just created plug it into this predict function and add those values down the down the column uh, called predicted let's take a look at that right now and i'm going to click on my data and you'll see that i have predicted on the right hand side so miles per gallon was 21.0. I predicted 23.28. So there's a little bit of an error there. So let's just continue down this path and create the residuals next. So my data, I'm gonna call this residuals because just because it makes sense, or we can call it error, whatever. Residuals is equal to, now there's a residuals function, R-E-S-I-D-U-A, uh, yeah. And what we're gonna put in there is also our model, okay? So let's create that. We've done it. Let's check it out. Model one, get me out of the way. Oops, not model one, my data. So now we have residuals, which is basically the amount of error. So it wasn't 23.28, it was 21. What's the difference? Negative 2.28. If you scroll down all the way to say Chrysler Imper Imperial, 14.7 was the predicted or was the actual miles per gallon but the predicted is 8.7, so it's off by 5.9, that's pretty high, uh, right? And the, the one even below is off by 6.8. So that's what that's showing us, just the amount of difference there is between the actual and the predicted values. So let's go back to the screen here. And now let's create that cool graph step-by-step. Step. I'll show you um, what it's doing to a point. I think you'll get the hint as we build it. So first we'll do, uh, well, we're going to load our library, ggplot2. Load that up, and let's just create a plot in our aesthetic. We're going to have our x axis equal to the weight, and the y axis equal to the miles per gallon, as always. And then from there, we're going to add, let's add our linear model, so our geom smooth, that's the function we use, and we say method equals linear model, lm. And from there, we can actually plot that, <clears throat> excuse me, Error data must be a data frame. Oh, I didn't add the data. <laughs> Let's start with that. So data equals my data comma, and then we should be good to go. 
All right, let me zoom back out so you can see it. So I had a couple errors because I didn't add the data. So there's our model, that's cool. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the gray confidence interval because we're not gonna use that. So we're just gonna say SE is equal to false and that should rerun it without the gray. Uh, now it's not a cool looking graph, but we're gonna get there. So be, be patient. <laughs> so we're gonna add uh, line segments to this. So we wanna find the line segment that goes from the predicted value to the actual value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another geometry called geom segment. And our aesthetic on this one is gonna be, we have x end is equal to the weight and y end is equal to the predicted value, predicted. And we're gonna do an alpha value, which is basically the transparent value of 0.3, whatever you wanna put, you can play around with that. Command enter and you'll see we should have error. There's an error, but you know, these things happen. Alpha equals, oh my goodness, got it. Okay, now that I figured out that I missed an equal sign, it took me about three or four minutes to figure out. Uh, we now have, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, you can see the line segments were created. So this is the actual linear model. So if the weight was, you know, two point something here, we go up and we say, hey, here's what the prediction is, but the actual is way up here right so that's what we're creating let me close that out and we're going to add more to this so now that we have our line segments let's add some points to the ends of those so geom we're going to add geom point and in this we're going to have an aesthetic and we're going to call this aesthetic the color equals we're going to do absolute value of the residuals and we'll make the size equal to the absolute value of the residuals as well just to make it pretty clear on what's what. Okay, there we go, we run that, zoom in. So remember, it knows what data we're looking at because we said data equals my data and my data has residuals in there. Don't forget, we added that using that dollar sign. So that's why we're allowed to just use the word residuals, it's fine. So this is pretty cool. We now have a linear model and we have the errors and you can see that the error is basically, you know, the further away it is from the actual, the bigger the ball is, right? and we can actually even color code this and do other stuff. Um, there's, there's a lot of this that you won't memorize, but you can just kind of reuse. So we can do a scale color continuous. This is probably something you'll use a lot. And we'll set a low is equal to a green and a high is equal to red, which is pretty common. And it just gives us a better visual. And as we build this, we can just continue on this path. So now, even though the size is there, the fact that it's red and green means, you know, the redder it is, the more of an error there is, the greener it is, the less. It's just one more thing to add to your um, list of visuals. We, uh, we can get rid of the guides, uh, the legends. So we're going to say guides. We don't want any colors. And we don't want any size equals false. We don't, we just want to clean it up a little bit. So just to create this cool plot. Boom, there it is. So the further away it is, the redder, the bigger, and there we have it, boom. That tells us quite a lot in that one little thing. We can also create a theme that will help us clean it up a little bit without doing a whole lot of extra work. So theme equals BW. And I think it just basically cleans up the axes and the displays and the fonts, things like that. So there we have it, that's what we have, that's what we showed. So we have a linear model and now we can see how well our linear model fit the data in a very good way. So you can definitely show this and portray it and say, you know, this is what we have. We have a couple of things out here that might be a little bit off, uh, but let's, let's continue on with this tutorial. And we're gonna talk about just a simple, simple plot. I'm not gonna explain too much more into it, but we're gonna do a plot and we're just gonna basically plot our fitted line. So our, our model one, which is the, the prediction or the model that we created, I'm gonna plot that. You'll see down at the bottom, I have a hit return to get the plot. Hit return, you'll see a plot show up. Uh, I'm gonna hit return a couple times to get all the plots. So there's another plot, another plot, another plot. So there we have it. I'm gonna zoom, well, I'm not gonna zoom in actually till we get to the first plot. I can explain this real quick now so you can kind of get a quick idea of what's going on. Okay, so this first one, when you plot the model, um, what this shows us is residuals versus fitted, right? What you want to see here 
is you don't want to see a distinct like sine wave or something weird. You know, it kind of wants to be linear. It's not curved that much. That's not that's not a um, a deal breaker yet. We're trying to figure out is this a linear model? Should we even be using a linear model to fit this data, right? To predict. And the answer is, according to this graph, probably still a good fit with a linear model um, because it's not too curved. It's not like wildly crazy curved. It's you know, sort of straight. We've got about half of uh, the data points above the red line and half below, and that's what you want to look for. Now, if all the data points were below or all the data points were above, you'd have issues. Then you'd say, you'd have to say, you know what? That reducible error called the the model selection can be fixed because this model certainly doesn't seem right. But this one, it, according to the data, you can see the the number of dots on the below and, be and above the red line are about equal. So that's what we're looking for there. Let's move on to the next one. And again, over time, you'll get into what all this stuff means. And, and this isn't really a statistics tutorial, but you kind of have to know some statistics to understand what's going on to pick the right models. Now, this one here is the normal QQ plot. And so I hit the right arrow on the plots to get to the next plot. And what you want to see is most of these dots, you want to see them mostly line up with this line. And when they do, you know that it's a normal distributed data set. And all of our... Um, predictions, all of our statistics is based on the fact that we think that this is a normally distributed data set. Okay, so let me zoom in on that. You can see they're all lined up pretty good. And if it's not normally distributed, again, some of our assumptions have to be thrown out the window. We're assuming all these things are correct based on it's normally distributed. And this will prove it. Hey, that's pretty close to normally distributed. That's what it shows. All right, the next one. Let's see. This is the scale location. Again, I, this one you just want to make sure that you want you have uh, the same amount of dots above and below the line. I believe this is basically a variability plot. Um, it means that if you have errors in your data, it's equal on the top and the bottom. You know, they average out to be zero. Okay, and finally, these are just certain things that you'll be looking at over and over again as you progress. All right, and this one here is a residual versus leverage. All this one is saying is, are there any outliers that are causing a lot of the reason why the graph is the way it is? So maybe there was like one outlier that was just super far out, right? And it's causing your graph to just skew completely and you're like, or maybe not skew is the, right, the correct term, but the model is going to be completely different based on that one data point. Does one data point have an influence over all the other ones? Does it have leverage over all the other points? And this is what shows you that. Now, I'm not going to get into what all these things are, like Cook's distance and all that. But what you want to look for is that Cook's distance right here. See that little red line right here? If there's data points below that red line, then, like, let's say this one's pretty close right here, right? This little data point right by Cook's distance. If that was below the line, you would, you'd want to ask yourself the question, is that a valid data point? Was there an error? Was there a human error? What is that data point? You know, go research why that is the way it is. It must be very off. Now, that doesn't mean you throw it out for the model. It does not mean that. It just means you have to go question why that data point's there. If it's, in fact, a false data point, you can get rid of it, sure. But it might be real. So that's why you have to research before you make any decisions on getting rid of data. So that's all that is. So that's the Cook's distance. If anything is below that, go question what that data is. Find out and see if it really is valid. And that's it. I know this is kind of a lot, and you don't have to understand the mathematics behind all this yet, but knowing how to read these charts to see if your assumptions, your models are correct. Remember, we just created one model. That's why I've been calling it Model 1. We're going to have Model 1, Model 2, Model 3. We're going to compare models, see which one's the best, the best for predictions. We're going to be doing all that in the future. So I hope that this helped you understand you know, some more of why we're doing what we're doing. See you in the next episode. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button or uh, subscribe. Please share it with your friends and throw it on social media. If you can put this on Twitter, maybe tag a few things like statistics or stats or R data science, things like that. That would help me out greatly. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next lesson.